our dear professor, our dear father, uh, Professor Emeritus um, Hassan. Uh, we have listened to him for the past three lectures. Last week, we listened to this beautiful munajat by our Buya Hamka. We talked about the uh, Tasawf modern, the new urban Tasawf. Is Alhamdulillah. We are part of it. Uh, we don't have to go to Suluk, <laughs> to go to the remote places or to the, to the mountain to become a Sufi. We can be in our house, in our offices, whenever we are, but we are still uh, submit or we are still uh, practicing uh, the basic uh, discipline, uh, being a good Muslim, inshallah. So this week, Prof will continue with the fourth lecture. So without further ado, we invite our dear, respected uh, professor to continue with us. Yeah, Prof. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Brother Shahran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And a uh, very good evening to all um, viewers in this part of the world, in Southeast Asia, uh, Indonesia, uh, this is evening, but uh, in uh, other places, uh, you may be uh, in the morning or uh, at daytime. Anyway, A'udhu um, Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu, wa na'udhu Billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina, man yahdihi Allahu fala mudilla lah, وما يضل الفلا هادي له والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم و الله you are the exalted we do not have any knowledge except that which you have taught us Indeed, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise, the all-knowing. And there is no power or strength except with you. O oh Allah, you are the uh, exalted, the almighty. We uh, express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is um, only by his grace and by his mercy that uh, I'm able to be with you tonight mm -hmm. and that we're able to continue this uh, series on uh, exposition on the life and thought of Buya Hamka. And um, I'd like to thank, of course, Brother Shahran uh, and Triple IT of uh, East Asia, uh, including Dr. Fauzan, I can see him there. Um, for hosting this series of lectures. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, in this uh, fourth lecture, uh, I will be focusing on the, um, on the, I would say the second most important book uh, after Tasawuf Modern, and that is uh, Falsafa Hido. Um, Falsafa Hido, or in English, a philosophy of life, was actually written before the, before the Second World War, uh, 1940, uh, after he finished uh, Tasawuf Modern. I think he worked on Falsafa Hido. And then uh, uh, this was um, continued for some time. And then uh, Indonesia gained independence or declared independence in 1945. And so uh, some of the post-independence speeches and writings have also been included in this book. Uh, let me show you the book. Uh, this is the book, yeah, Fasafa Hidup. It's about 500 pages uh, and it's written uh, with this uh, philosophical um, uh, orientation or approach. Uh, and and Buya uh, is one of those few uh, scholars who uh, actually uh, 
became uh, a, a, an admirer uh, of uh, philosophy. Uh, and he learned all this from the Arabic translations uh, from either English or French or from Arabic itself. Uh, so this is, um, as I said, a very important work in the Malay world because in 1940, there was no sh such uh, book uh, on falsafa hidup, the philosophy of life. Uh, whereas um, we know that uh, philosophy of life is very important. Uh, it is part of the uh, worldview that uh, we all have about existence, about, um, about uh, the meaning of, of, of man, uh, and um, how did he? How did life start? And uh, uh, where are we heading? What is the purpose of life? And now these are all questions which have to do with worldview. Uh, but um, in this book, Buya focuses on on the philosophy of life, uh, written from, as I said, a philosophical perspective. But at the end of it, or uh, he be he begins with. Uh, say philosophical discussion, and then he takes you uh, gradually through his uh, rational arguments uh, using the, uh, the the Quranic um, sources to support his arguments, and then also uh, some Sufi uh, perspectives also uh, brought in, so that at the end of the book he will give you uh, the conclusion which is very Islamic. So Buya doesn't start with something Islamic uh, and then uh, uh, end with something uh, quite uh, liberal. He starts with an open approach and then gradually mm -hmm. he takes you through the history of ideas, uh, Western and Eastern, and then he would go uh, to the Quran, uh, to the Prophet Wasallam, and then through the thoughts of some uh, Muslim uh, thinkers and also Sufis. And then he will give you at the end, the conclusion. Uh, so this, uh, uh, in this book, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, you remember that in in the last um, in the last lecture in uh, lecture number three, um, I discussed uh, the uh, the also the content of uh, the South Modern. In fact, the theme throughout the South Modern was uh, just one theme, and that is uh, bahagia or happiness. Uh, what is happiness? Uh, how do philosophers, Western and Eastern, look at happiness? And then how do you get happiness according to different schools of thought? Uh, and then he would also look at the, the Sufi perspective on happiness. And then he would come to the end that happiness is actually uh, not actually, the, the, the ultimate happiness is in the hereafter, uh, not in this world. Anyway, in this book, in this uh, Fasa Fahidub, he does not have one single theme like Bahagia. In fact, he would, uh, he would discuss different, um, I would say components of the philosophy of life uh, made up of, um, of moral, uh, spiritual values or principles. So for instance, uh, he, he divides uh, the book into, into uh, nine chapters. Um, and, uh, and the first one is uh, in general, he discusses uh, the, um, the importance of of, um, of uh, reason uh, in human life. So they might say that is uh, rationality. 
you know, rationality as part of, 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 uh, of a philosophy of life. And then in the second chapter, he discusses uh, the, the place of rationality and, and knowledge uh, in, uh, in Islam. And then in the third chapter, he discusses uh, the, 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 the subject of, um, of um, let's see, uh, kautamaan, that is to say, uh, what is regarded as, 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 as a priority in life. Okay, and then number four is adab kosopanan. It's about ethics and good character. So that, that is a fourth, you might say, the fourth component of the philosophy of life from an Islamic perspective. Because what uh, Buya does is that uh, he is actually explaining uh, his own philosophy of life, but using uh, a philosophical uh, method uh, as though it is uh, as though it is not his actually, but but uh, you know he it is uh, an abstraction of ideas coming from the philosophers and so on. But actual fact, uh, those uh, components uh, two, three, four, adab kosopanan, uh, and then uh, number five, kesederhanaan, that is atidal um, in Arabic, and then number six, the the value of, of courage, shaja'ah, uh, and then number seven, the value of ka'adilan uh, or uh, adala, and then number eight, uh, and number nine, the value of of, of um, of uh, uh and, and and in other words, all these uh, eight uh, eight you might say components of or constituents of philosophy of life uh, are actually uh, components of his own philosophy, but they are actually based on the teachings of Islam. Um, all right. So now let me just uh, put the book down, and I will go to my notes. Um, in this book, um, Hamka decides to expound the concept of philosophy of life. Remember, uh, of course, today, in, in, today we, are, we are familiar with philosophy or philosophies of life, but in the, in the 40s, um, you, you don't hear people talking about philosophy of life from a philosophical perspective. But Buya did that, just as you know, you would never dream an alim would, would write a novel, <laughs> you know, and he came out with, with a novel, Tenggelamnya Kapal Van Der Vick and Di Bawah Lindungan Kaaba. So he was able to go into creative writing and then the Tasawuf, exposition, and now philosophy of life. And this is important for a Malay uh, Indonesian intellectual to take the lead uh, in this part of the world, I would consider. So Buya is, I would say, among the first, if not the first uh, thinker uh, in this part of the world to come up with a, a, a quite a substantial work on philosophy of life. Um, now, what he has done in this book is uh, he has he discussed several uh, philosophical and ethical concepts, uh, which uh, form, as I said, the the constituents of a sound philosophy of life. That he would like the Indonesian people uh, to to appreciate. And Buya doesn't force people. And Buya doesn't say this is it. You have to follow. He doesn't do that. You know, that is not his style. And that is also not the Sufi style. Um, because Buya is not, is not, you know, that kind of scholar who stresses on uh, do this, follow this, you know, this is halal, this is haram. He is not that kind of a thinker. He's more philosophical, more open. Uh, he goes for rational discussion uh, without being emotional. Now, I would just like to mention that um, 
uh, he uh, wrote this book. Uh, uh, okay, before I say that, uh, the uh, Tasawuf Modern uh, was written at the behest of a Chinese uh, Muslim who, who asked him to write about Bahagia. Uh, and so he wrote, uh, in, you know, to fulfill the wishes of a Chinese. In this, uh, this book, he wrote not at the behest of anyone, but as, as a sign of uh, his, his gratitude to his guru, uh, A.R. Sultan Mansur, Abdul Rashid Sultan Mansur, who was uh, a leading thinker and leader of uh, the reformist movement of Muhammadiyah, uh, in Indonesia. So uh, um, Hamka was very much influenced uh, by the teachings and by this, I would say, saintly uh, personality of, um, of Sultan Mansur. Uh, he says about his guru that uh, Sultan Mansur lived uh, with spiritual wealth and affluence, uh, which were without peer. Uh, tidak ada tandingan uh, uh, from this uh, respect because uh, uh, Sultan Mansur lived um, with financial uh, straightened circumstances. He didn't have much money, but whatever money he had or wealth, he would immediately give it to others. <laughs> so such a saintly man. So uh, he may be poor financially, but Buya considers him very, very rich spiritually. Uh, so he says that um, his teacher, Sultan Mansur, had an abundance of generosity, of altruism, of egalitarianism, and piety of the highest kind. Uh, and um, he kept, uh, Buya kept on saying that, that this man lived with only two books. Uh, the Quran, and then uh, you know this um, uh, this index to the Quran, uh, the index of the Quran, because Buya, uh, because Sultan Mansur will always be referring to the Quran, so he needs he needs the index from Fuad Abdul Baqi, Al Mu'jam Al Mufahras Li Al Fadi Al Quran. So uh, Buya begins by uh, describing first the, the origins of the word philosophy. And we know that, you know, uh, philosophy uh, or falsafa in Arabic uh, is translated as hikmah, um, uh, is, is a love of wisdom. Yeah, philosophy literally means a love of wisdom. Uh, and so he um, discussed the views of uh, uh, the materialists on the one hand, and then the spiritualists, and so on. Um, then he also uh, discussed the um, approach of, of Muslim philosophers uh, and, and theologians who, uh, who did not separate reason from uh, revelation, but in fact integrated reason and revelation and that uh, sound rational thinking uh, within the framework of Iman uh, in, in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would provide the answers uh, to the fundamental questions raised by the philosophers. So Hamka emphasizes uh, not only in this book but in many of his writings the need to balance reason with revelation, the need to integrate reason with revelation, or the intellect with the heart, or what he calls uh, in some, uh, in, in another, another place, um, the intellect and intuition, reason and intuition. And uh, Buya then uh, uh, mentions um, the, uh, the model of uh, the Ulul Albab in the Quran. And these are the people with sound uh, uh, reason. 
Ashabul Uqul as Salima. These are the people with sound reason. Um, uh, as, as a proof that uh, this is the, uh, the, the paradigm of Tawheed, which integrates uh, both reason and revelation. Uh, then Hamka says that uh, after achieving independence, uh, many Indonesian thinkers and uh, philosophers uh, emerged and um, and of course they were also describing uh, their own uh, understanding of how uh, the people could uh, achieve uh, the goals of the new state of Indonesia, such, such as kesejahteraan or well-being, keadilan masyarakat or social justice, uh, and, and so on. Uh, but um, but as a Muslim, uh, Buya uh, uh, considers um, the the himself. He considers himself as as a lover of of wisdom. Uh, but he says, "I dare not regard myself as a philosopher." Now that's very very uh, um, modest uh, of him. Um, because I think uh, he could be regarded uh, as a philosopher uh, in his own way, and he would be, uh, of course, um, above the level of the ordinary uh, ulama uh, who are only uh, well-versed with the religious sciences and not with philosophy. Hamka, um, uh, in the rest of... Uh, Chapter one. Uh, remember that he has nine chapters, and uh, this five hundred, almost five hundred pages. I am going to give you just the gist of it. You know, just the gist of it, uh, and then I will uh, say about uh, um, ten fifteen. I will stop so that we'll have about fifteen minutes of Q and A. Uh, all right. So in the, in the rest of chapter one, Hamka discusses the importance of aqal or intellect or uh, human intelligence uh, uh, in life. Um, and uh, he says that aqal was created to serve good purposes, but because human beings are also created with desire, with hawa, with nafs, says nafsu, uh, and Hawa, uh, the Akal uh, could come under the influence of nafs, under the influence of this uh, uh, base desire or an nafsul ammara uh, bisu, uh, which would lead human beings uh, to the wrong uh, paths and the wrong conduct. And uh, Buya says that Akal becomes darkened because of nafs. Then he discusses 15 characteristics of people of reason. Um, it's very long. I will not, uh, I will not bother you with that. Uh, then, um, but at the end of uh, the 15 uh, characteristics of people with, with sound aqal, he of course uh, refers to the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that your ibadah, is measured in accordance with the extent of your uh, uh, of your um, aqal in it, in the extent of to which you understand what you are doing, and that you internalize the meaning of your ibadah uh, with reason, and so you are going to be evaluated uh, in accordance uh, with the degree that you put your reason into your, your, your intellect and your um, rational understanding in whatever religious duties you perform. Then um, Buya says that, um, uh, coming to the end of, of the uh, chapter, he says, the goal of reason, tujuan akal, is ma'rifatullah. 
Of course, Ma'rifatullah is a Sufi concept. See how he blends uh, reason with, you might say, mysticism. Ma'rifatullah uh, is, um, uh, you know, uh, is something that has to do with, with, uh, with uh, Gnostic, uh, Gnos Gnosticism or the, uh, the spiritual knowledge of God and not his essence, but of his attributes. So, um, so the, the, the real purpose of Aqal is not to challenge God, is not to be worshipped as a God, is not to be the only source of knowledge. And these are the three uh, attributes of, of reason in the modern world. In the modern world, reason is removed from its uh, uh, anchorage in, in reason, uh, revelation. So reason becomes completely autonomous and independent and then absolutized to be the only criterion of what's right and wrong, where revelation is out of the picture. Uh, and, um, and then uh, reason is deified. Uh, reason is deified as, as uh, God uh, in, 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 in place of the real God. So this, to my mind, is, uh, is important. Uh, to understand um, uh, and, uh, and also to, to prevent the Muslim Ummah from going uh, the wrong way, the way of, of modern Europe uh, with, uh, with rationalism alone. Okay? So, um, to, to then uh, for Buya, Knowledge uh, uh, should then, or, or science, should be guarded by iman uh, or, or faith, and uh, and and this kind of of uh, uh, life uh, after the present life. And he says this this uh, knowledge or this science, which is uh, guided, uh, not not just guarded, but guided by iman would value the life that comes after this life. That is the eternal life. Yeah? And that, Tubuya, is a source of happiness. Okay. Then, uh, Buya also discusses the place of, of uh, Sunnatullah uh, and how uh, people uh, use the term uh, laws of nature uh, uh, and attribute uh, these laws to uh, to nature, uh, bringing about those um, regularities uh, which we call uh, natural laws. But to Buya, those are Sunnatullah, and um, and uh, Sunnatullah has to be uh, understood in the proper way. And this is part of, 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 um, of also observing the adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and Buya addresses the, the importance of adab, uh, proper adab, proper etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with uh, fellow human beings, with nature, and so on. Uh, uh, but then he says that uh, the, the adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, requires um, uh, loving, loving him and loving the Prophet above everything else. And uh, Buya quotes the hadith from Al-Bukhari and Muslim, La yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna Allah wa rasuluhu ahabbu ilayhi mimma siwa huma. None of you uh, has um, um, complete faith uh, or sound faith until um, Allah and his messenger are loved more than anything else to him. So uh, adab with Allah 
involves loving Allah. This is very important for us to know, yeah, for, for present day Muslims to know, because we are required as believers to love Allah. Those who have faith have the highest degree of love of Allah. Uh, so we, uh, we have to understand that uh, this is required. And uh, Buya uh, then goes on to uh, another chapter. Um, I, I'm skipping uh, some of the uh, chapters because I think that um, I may not have time to, to uh, give all the uh, summary. I will try my best. Uh, in the chapter on, uh, on Kursadarhana'an or, or moderation, Buya uh, describes uh, various aspects uh, of moderation. Uh, moderation in, the, um, in uh, what do you call it, in the, in the use of reason, moderation in expressing one's feelings, uh, moderation in the pursuit of life, uh, and uh, moderation in the uh, craving for wealth, uh, and so on. So it's a very, very long chapter. And um, I think this must have been written before, uh, before he started working on, uh, on his Tafsir al-Azhar. Because this Qasadar uh, Hana'an, this uh, subject of moderation, is in fact... Uh, uh, found uh, in the Quran in the verse uh, 143 of Surah Al-Baqarah. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim wa kathalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasata litakunu shuhada ala nas wa yakuna rasul alaykum shahida. So uh, indeed we have made you into a, a middle nation um, uh, so that you become witnesses uh, unto mankind and that and that uh, the messenger would be a witness unto you but uh, he did not refer uh, to this uh, surah he did not refer to this ayah uh, but but his elaboration on moderation in fact uh, fit in very well uh, with uh, with uh, a, any any good commentary on this ummatan wasata or wasatiya in islam so I would say that Buya Hamka uh, in the Malay world could be among the first to, uh, to, to, uh, to expound uh, the concept of kursadar hana'an or, uh, or moderation. And that's another first for him. I would think so because it's very important. And he would like the Indonesian people to adopt this kasadar hana'an because basically what you find the, uh, the tidal is avoiding of uh, the extreme of ifrad and tafrid, of excess and liberality. You know, you, you, um, you are sometimes given two uh, opposite choices and, uh, and both are extremes. So the best way uh, the just way is the middle way. So ummah and wasata is the ummah in the middle, in the sense that you are the most just, the most excellent, the strongest, the best, the what have you. So he would like the Indonesian people uh, to practice moderation. And I think this is a very important lesson uh, for all of us today. Let me then uh, go to... Um, uh, then he, he also talks about the need to uh, transform the education system, uh, the non-formal education system, the, 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 the way the, the, the uh, families uh, bring up their children. He wants them to be in, in, in infused uh, with the uh, values of moderation because um, uh, that without this, ability to find the middle path, uh, people can go into uh, one extreme or the other extreme. Uh, I was very concerned about that. So he would like, uh, he says that there are children of well-to-do families who do not give sound uh, character education 
to their children uh, and not emphasizing moderation, he said that they would become social parasites, social parasites who would depend on others for their well-being or sustenance. See, Buya is very far-sighted uh, in this, that the, the education on moderation uh, will lead, will produce the kind of people that will be, uh, you know, uh, independent, but also avoiding extremes and then be self-reliant rather than becoming social parasites. Then, then uh, I, I should mention that he discussed uh, a very important topic in today's world that is a relationship between uh, state and religion, or what he calls greja dan nagara, the separation of church and state. That's a political subject. Uh, and this also comes under his philosophy of life. Uh, of course, to, uh, to him or to all Muslims, the state uh, ought to also uh, govern based on the uh, input of religious values, religious norms and principles. Uh, but but uh, Buya uh, maintains that the state that Islam uh, is uh, propagating is a democratic state. Buya used the word democracy. Uh, and, and so Buya and of course, uh, Bapak Nasir uh, is, is you might consider as among the first uh, uh, Islamic Democrats uh, preceding uh, our, our doctor, what's his name in, in, in Algeria, uh, who is known to be, you know, a propagator of Islamic democracy. Anyway, um, so Buya uh, is not in, agree in agreement with this separation. He would like the Indonesian state, because the, the majority of the people are Muslims, that the state be governed in accordance with Islamic principles. But what form of politics and what form of governance, he says this is left for the people to decide based on the shura, based on the mutual consultation. All right, um, then, yeah, I said that um, he wants uh, the Indonesian state to be truly independent because he says there's no point uh, declaring yourself a merdeka independent uh, politically, but your mind is controlled still by the colonial system. And Buya, uh, not in this book, but in his, some of his speeches referred to al ghazwul fikri you know, the, 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 um, uh, the intellectual battle uh, in which the colonial masters uh, seek uh, to uh, retain uh, their dominance, uh, although they are outside of the country, of the, of the colony, but they still like to retain by exporting their ideas, uh, their uh, systems, uh, and then also by, by cultivating a new crop of, of elites who are uh, also uh, spiritually, uh, mentally colonized. Um, Buya cautions against, um, uh, you know, even during the, he says, during the time of revolution, now here is self-criticism by Buya. He said there are people during the time of evolution who would actually be interested in gaining power for themselves. Whereas the struggle for independence, the revolution was for the state, for the country, for the people, the community. But there are individuals or there were individuals who actually uh, uh, saw this revolution as an opportunity to make themselves, uh, you know, known and be uh, appointed as leaders because they crave power and, and they wanted uh, to use the power for their own selves. Um, in the uh, in the one chapter before the conclusion, uh, Hamka writes that Islam 
is a formulator of a worldview. Islam is pembentuk pandangan hidup. This is pandangan hidup. In the next lecture, Brother Shahran, in lecture number five, insha'Allah, I will focus on another book. Uh, following this book is uh, Pandangan Hidup Muslim. That is dealing with the worldview, the Muslim worldview. This one is philosophy of life according to Islam, but he did not say according to Islam. So the philosophy of life is rather limited, but worldview is, is broader. But he did say in this book that Islam is a formulator of a worldview. And that um, then he goes on to speak about how uh, the, uh, the Sharia uh, responsibilities and also religious obligations in Islam uh, actually uh, uh, take care of both the uh, spiritual needs as well as the material needs of mankind. But uh, what is most important in the performance of these uh, ibadat like uh, um, salah, zakah, uh, fasting, saum, uh, siyam, and, and hajj, uh, he says um, the most important uh, uh, refinement of this uh, worship proper is love. He says, if you don't have the love, then it is not complete. So, uh, because with love uh, or mahabba, uh, then uh, your, 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 your devotion is complete. Because Allah wants the believers to have this love. So then, then he says that um, um, the most important struggle is the inner self, the jihadun nafs. Um, and uh, when you have love of Allah, um, then uh, you you have to then of course you you conquer your lower desires um, and uh, and your love becomes purified. So uh, you need to undergo frequent what he calls tazkiyah and nafs purification of the self. Now in the conclusion, I'm coming to the end. Uh, Hamka reiterates that. In Islamic philosophy, he says, all power uh, uh, is uh, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is this is very important uh, lesson, message for the politicians or those aspiring to be politicians or to be political masters because uh, they are going for power. And in the process, they begin with good intentions, but in the process, uh, they, got, they get into the, uh, the um, materialistic culture uh, and uses power only for personal gain or for, or for cronies or for, um, uh, for your friends and for your family and for yourself. And this has happened in Malaysia uh, in recent years. So, uh, and uh, Malaysia is regarded as uh, one of the most corrupt countries in the world, if not the most corrupt country in the world with the uh, greatest uh, kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, scandal uh, in, this, uh, in the 21st, 21st century. So anyway, um, uh, Buya says that, um, that uh, we have to remember that Islamic philosophy, in Islamic philosophy, power uh, is uh, with Allah and, and that all human beings are actually equal and that, uh, that, um, that one is considered uh, noble or the noblest uh, among, among people are those who have a higher degree of taqwa or God uh, consciousness. In akramakum indallahi atqakum. Then finally, he um, he says that uh, with ikhlas uh, we will obtain uh, the baraka, uh, the blessing from Allah. We will obtain also the peace and security, and also the inner tranquility, the sakina and inner peace. Uh, the end for the muttaqin, the end uh, is paradise uh, prepared for the muttaqin. 
of course this is all taken from the Quran like uh, uh, this jannat or iddat lil muttaqin prepared for the for those who have who are God fearing and he says the essence of paradise which is more valuable than paradise itself is ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah we all want to go to paradise as the final goal but more important than paradise is ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pleasure of Allah so he says in the end we begin uh, we began our struggle in life with birth then at the end we face death which transports us to the eternal life uh, for uh, for for the uh, life of baqa the life of permanence from this life of fana of annihilation we move on to the life of baqa in the end he says goodness will prevail because we were originally created with goodness with fitra with ruh from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we must put our trust uh, in the, in the goodly regard for uh, for god he says in malay in indonesian bersangka baik terhadap tuhan and he says at the end this is the philosophy of life inilah falsafah hidup so i will end there uh, brothers and sisters and brother shaharan i'll end there and we'll be very happy to listen uh, and benefit from your comments inshallah thank you thank you so much prof uh if i can pick up one line uh, that hamka or you explain that our ibadah is measured based on our reason so i think this is very true uh, it will be meaningless we just doing thing without knowing uh, exactly yeah be behind it yes uh, we take the first question from my brother nuruddin uh, can you explain further about chapter 9 of the book falsafah hidup where hamka elaborates on islam membentuk pandangan hidup does this discussion show that hamka realizes that islam is a distinctive worldview based on the spirit of tauhid Amka also says in the conclusion that the discussion on the falsafah hidup is actually the essence of what is called human right. Can you elaborate further? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, well, okay, uh, apparently you have uh, you have also read the book, <laughs> Brother Nuruddin, so maybe you can tell me better than, <laughs> than myself. Uh, uh, but I was, um, I was, I was thinking maybe when he when he wrote that um, that Islam is the uh, the formulator of um, the worldview, pembentuk uh, pandangan hidup. Maybe he is preparing himself for the next book, which is pandangan hidup Muslim, because uh, he did not go into very long discussion. Uh, but then he he went into uh, you know how the Sharia uh, takes care of both the external and the internal needs of human beings. So let me just have a quick look at the uh, chapter nine. Yeah, Islam pembentuk pandangan hidup. Yeah, Islam pembentuk pandangan hidup. Um, then he goes into uh, Sharia. So I do not know whether he was maybe not. It is not here. But when I read the the next book, inshallah, for next week, I will try to look whether he he realized that uh, Islam has a distinctive uh, worldview based on tawhid but i would even even if he doesn't say so uh, i would imagine that this uh, this is implied uh, but then again uh, let me uh, read uh, the book um, uh, i have started looking at, at some of it uh, but inshallah by next week i hope i'll be able to 
go through the book and see whether uh, he has made any um, any any remarks about uh, the worldview being Islamic worldview being very distinctive. Um, okay, and then as for human rights, yeah, here he uh, maybe again here because he is referring to the Indonesian, uh, the new Indonesian um, state after independence. Uh, and, and I think um, the, uh, of course, the, the secular intellectuals and, and the secular nationalists um, were pointing to uh, um, Ham, you know, um, this uh, universal human rights, uh, Asasi Manusia. And Buya uh, says, uh, well, uh, the Islamic uh, Islamic religion uh, allowed and the Islamic um, governance or uh, or governance based on Islam uh, allows freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of life, freedom to own property, uh, which is of course against the communist uh, idea of collective ownership, um, and and freedom of uh, of uh, also um, dignity for women. Uh, so um, he finds uh, harmony between Islam and the uh, fundamental human rights. Uh, I, of course, in, in today's world, uh, this um, uh, fundamental human rights uh, have become a, a kind of religion uh, with some people uh, who, who regard it as the most important thing because they're emphasizing uh, the value of absolute freedom for human beings. And I don't think Buya would ever agree to the idea of absolute freedom. Uh, for instance, uh, for some of those uh, people who, who practice, uh, let's say, uh, um, a homosexual uh, uh, lifestyle, uh, would consider is, is their freedom uh, to define their body and how to use their body, uh, and 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 also uh, those um, who uh, wanted to marry uh, from the same sex uh, would would say this is this is uh, my human right. So human rights uh, have become a, a pseudo religion, uh, and it is also of course happening in Malaysia and Indonesia, but uh, of course at that time. Uh, human rights was was something new, and and Buya saw the, uh, the the harmony between uh, the universal human rights and also uh, Islamic uh, values. Okay, that's uh, my response uh, to Brother Nuruddin. Maybe uh, you have other yeah, questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, before that, if if Dr. Aziza want to add something, we can unmute her. I send her a message. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> but she is not uh, responding. But if she wants, <laughs> just let me know. Yeah. And, uh, Dr. Can... Aziza, you, you are the authority on the Tasawuf Modern. Aziza Rahman, is it? Yeah. Okay. okay, we take from Brother Ibrahim. Uh, he also asked last week, uh, what books of Hamka are available in English? Any... Any translation of his work from in English? Uh, so far that we know. Hmm. Very interesting. I, I know thesis a few thesis in English, but not. Oh yeah. Himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I don't know if it has any has been translated. No, I I wouldn't know. But I think maybe Doctor Said uh, Khairuddin would know. But I I don't know um, anything in English. Actually, I wanted uh, Doctor Aziza. Uh, to publish her book because uh, her thesis because it is uh, translation and uh, critical annotation. So it would be the first translation of the South Modern uh, in English. But um, no, I don't think I have come across any book in English. It's very surprising. Surprising indeed. Uh, Assalamualaikum, Prof. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 there's no 
uh, English. Uh, there's no Hamkas book in English yet. Okay, your your thesis will be the first one, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah, you see, it's very important that people know uh, the uh, the wisdom uh, and the and the contributions of uh, Buya Hamka, but uh, it's only the Malay Indonesian people who would know. But in English, the whole world will know. So, your work, uh, your thesis, should be. Uh, publish into a book as soon as possible, Dr. Aziza. Actually, there are two giants, uh, Nasir and Hamka. So yeah. we, should, we really should have a team. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I planned a long time ago, but I, I could not implement it to translate Fiqhu Da'wah of Buya, uh, but, but Nasir. I, I had that intention to translate Fiqhu Da'wah, but I never could never do it. But, now but maybe it is... Huh? Uh, Prof, Pasal Fahidup is more, is harder to trans translate. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, because, because it is philosophical, yeah. you know, written from a philosophical style. But Aziza, can you brief three, two, three minutes about your thesis? Ah, uh, yes, please. Yeah. Yes, uh, actually, I trace Hamka from the beginning, and mostly from, uh, the, from his childhood, and how he said he was affected by the way he was brought up. So actually, Tasawuf Modern, uh, it was originally a 65 uh, series of articles in Pedoman Masyarakat. So um, he missed one or two weeks, but actually, um, uh, um, he, uh, he was trying to... Uh, Hamka was trying to like please. Actually, it's about it's on happiness. Sorry, of course I'm not. It's okay. Sorry. It's, okay. it's on happiness actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So bahagia, he, bahagia. Bahagia. So he <laughs> actually he he wrote from what uh, he actually when I write uh, the articles. First, he said he wrote because he was responding to the uh, the the situation around him and the people who were suffering. But I don't know when in his book he said that he wrote for his friend or James King. Though. I don't know why. But uh, so I, I so Tasaw Modern is actually uh, uh, he he is a discourse of, of happiness from the Sufi discourse. Actually, he wrote yeah. happiness on Sufi, Sufism based on Sufism. But actually, it's not a, a, a Sufi, Sufi book per se. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. But it's uh, actually because he said why he chose Sufism because the Sufis were interested to discuss happiness. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the Sufi discourses. So, okay, doctor. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Aziza. <laughs> we probably have two, three minutes for final remark. We still have questions from Mr. Nuruddin, Mr. Ibrahim, and, but it's okay. We will take it for next week. Okay, so, well, thank you very much, uh, uh, Brother Shahran and uh, brothers and sisters, uh, for uh, following this. As I mentioned, I consider this work, uh, Fasa Fahido, a very, very important work in the Malay world uh, because this is the first uh, work on the philosophy of life uh, written from a a philosophical a perspective um, and um, uh, uh, as usual, Buya would, would discuss other uh, philosophers and scholars um, uh, and then uh, coming up with the um, references uh, the, uh, from the Quran uh, and the Sunnah. Uh, but um, uh, what I like um, uh, the Malay people uh, in 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 uh, the young younger generation of Muslims in Malaysia and also in Indonesia is to um, uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, imbibe those uh, seven eight um, constituents of philosophy, you know, especially the kesederhanaan, uh, adab. Uh, and then uh, the, the sound reasoning, um, uh, which is based on the, 
on on the, on faith uh, in God, uh, and then but so the Rahana'an there uh, has a, a lot of message for people going into politics, going into uh, governance, uh, going into um, entrepreneurship, uh, as well as uh, civil service. Um, so I would like them to um, also uh, benefit from the advice given by Buya because Buya has given uh, his insights into what has happened to young people who are very ambitious uh, to gain power, authority, uh, status, but without proper spiritual um, purification of the heart, uh, they would, uh, uh, you know, they would uh, fall into the trap of immorality, of uh, corruption and fraud. And that is uh, very, very pertinent uh, to uh, today's political um, chaos that we have in our country, in Malaysia particularly. So I hope, inshallah, uh, next week I will take another book uh, on Pandangan Hidup Muslim uh, to discuss the contents with you. Thank you so much. And may Allah bless you all, uh, Brother Shahran, and uh, forgive me for any shortcomings. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. We'll see you next week. Uh, thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.